did when it came uh, down to my being called for breakfast. Now, sorry, uh, the F angle's a little off. It's because my webcam is angled towards uh, me and my because of my small desk, my monitors are at an angle from one, uh, of one another. So therefore there's a bit of an odd angle. If you hear a dog crying, that is nothing but my dog, Pop. He is upset because we just put up the new Christmas decorations and my mad did a whole fucking clean of like the downstairs uh, s uh, sofa and whatnot. The dogs are acting territorial and they keep getting into fights with one another. So he is up here with me to prevent fighting. So I do apologize for any of that type of background noise. Now, on to Strixhaven. Uh, a bit of a mixed bag with this book. For one thing, I love the whole, like again, like when they revealed some of the information about Strixhaven, like the, diff the five different colleges, like I was really excited about that. I, I love the idea because I'm a fan of Harry Potter. My girlfriend's a big fan of Harry Potter. My nephew's a fan of Harry Potter. My niece is a fan of Harry Potter. Like, my, my, my niece and nephew watch, like, the movie. They have a Harry Potter marathon uh, for Christmas. Like, that's their Christmas movie, like. <laughs> um, so, like, I'm looking forward. Because, like, they've been asking me to play D&D. &D, and I've been, like, I've been holding off a little bit because of COVID. And then there's... I, I've been trying to think of the right type of adventure for them. So Strixhaven is going to be the right up their alley, uh, with it being sort of like a Hogwarts for adventuring. I like that some of the changes they made from the UA. For one, like I like how the classes are not were not are not dual anymore. But then again, there's a on the classes. I'm very disappointed that they removed the classes or th they're not obviously located uh let me give you an example like eat this now i'm gonna read out some posts from D, D facebook dungeons and dragons verified official facebook page right now the first one i came down to uh, the first one i found going back the furthest uh, sorry the earliest closest to this month uh sorry this date is november 13th right this is what they had to say about no november 13th learn the skills you can use in life and death enroll in Witherbloom college of strixhaven university we have programs for bleed doctor boon uh boon witch dread bones <sighs> now that that suggests three subclasses now, if we go back to some to their some of their older posts, uh, scrolling down, scrolling down, we get to November eleventh. Uh, you know, sharp turn, sharp tongue, piercing whip. Use your nana, na nano rimo skills in the heat of battle. Enroll in the Silver Quill College, uh, Silver Quill College at Strixhaven University. We have programs for. Banter Mage, Ink Caster, War Singer. Be the master of magic of words. Now, like, so, and then it, it goes on. There's basically three subclasses. Sorry, they suggest three subclasses for every college. Um, now, th now, as I said, this is going back to november 8th and so this is after the ua i know the ua was a was a very big miss i know people were not fans of them and i saw in an interview that they they did like sorry in an interview i watched yesterday it uh it was broadcast i think the day before so it was two days ago a week at most they, vi they were talking about some of the subclasses and how it was bad and why they're moving away from that where there would be a subclass shared between classes like you know and I, I get it I get why they they went away from that direction I didn't think it was such a bad idea but hey they went away from it 
and it seems like they were tying this uh, a subclass to one class and to a college which again i was i was i was even okay for i was like okay so maybe not every class gets some like you know but with like three subclasses per college like that's like uh, that's 15 total so in my mind okay 15 classes okay so some classes may get more than one but there's definitely an argument to be made for e like for each class getting at least one and it will be most likely a class you know it'll most likely be associated with a college that best suits the core concept of the class for example maybe Witherbloom would have uh, a druid like would have the druid subclass you know and then but then a, a what's it called a rogue might act uh, no sorry rogue would be either silver a bard the bard subclass would most likely be associated with silver quill you know or lore hold you know maybe the bard would have uh, more than one but my point is there is definitely an amount by this list that we got last month there is definitely enough subclasses for every class to be associated like you know to, to create some sort of uniqueness of playstyle to a college now it turns it looks like they completely scrapped that uh, again i don't know if i'm missing something or if they planned if i don't know when they changed their minds uh on the subclasses but it seems like they're completely got rid of and now i don't know if this is a situation where it's like the sidekicks where it's they're not integrated yet on ddb so because that's where i'm reading this from so i have no idea but i'm at to looking <laughs> All I'm not looking all over the 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 sorry the pre adventure section of Strixhaven and I cannot find it. Uh, there's making friends and rivals, fellow students, magic items, spells. Okay, now this is another bit that very disappointed me was the sheer lack of spells in this book now i'm going to get to the good stuff the stuff that i really approve of but folks so like, this is not just me bashing on the book okay there's uh now if you keep in mind folks i'm using my computer uh so my vision my eyes will i will be looking I, i'm trying to get into the habit of looking at the camera but i need to since i don't rehearse videos i don't have a script <laughs> i need to actually you know look uh away um let's see here Maybe one of these days, uh, well, if I had my camera on the ground, like in front of the screen, I would still be looking uh, up from it. So I guess I can't win the camera placement. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, let's look at the spells. Uh, um, again, for the sake of not spoiling things too much, I am actually not going to be, you know, showing footage of things except for maybe images because i don't want to show too much and i'm not going to read out every like the description of things like um okay so instead what we got is instead of having subclasses which again i had no problem with you know so uh like again they had based on last month they had like 15 subclasses no sorry no it was 14 uh there were t lore hold and silver quill bow had um something singer uh what was it they both had war singer so there was a bit there was overlap between silver quill and lore hold so instead what we're getting is your background which gives you skill proficiencies you get uh in some cases you get a language uh, let's see, for example, Witherbloom gets Nature and Survival. Uh, they get a tool proficiency of Herbalism Kits. You get a language of your choice, and your equipment is a bottle of black ink, an ink pen, a book about plant identification, an iron pot, and a Herbalism Kit, a school uniform, and a pouch containing 15 gold pieces. You also get the Witherbloom init Initiate feature. You gain a uh, Strixhaven Initiate fee 
presented later in this chapter. You must choose Wither Bloom within it. In addition, if you have spell casting or packed magic feature, the, the spells on the Wither Bloom spells table are added to your spell list. If you're a spell if you're a spell casting class or if you're in this class of character with multiple spell lists, these spells are added to all of them. Now, the Wither Bloom spells are Cure Wounds, Inflict Wounds, Lesser Restoration, Wither Bloom, uh, sorry, Wither and Bloom, Revivify, Vampiric Touch, Blight, Death Ward, Anti Life Shell, and Greater Restoration. And it then gives you tips on customizing the descriptions of your spells to reflect the motif of Wither Bloom. Now, uh, back to Silver Quill to show, sorry, to describe what they get instead. Silver Quill being the very. They're sort of like Slytherin, if I had to put some terms in. They get Intimidation, Persuasion, uh, Scale of Efficiency, two languages of your choice, a bottle of black ink, an ink pen, a book of poetry, a school uniform, and a pouch containing 15 gold pieces. And then they get the exact same feature as the Witherbloom, except it's for the uh, uh, Silver Quill spells. Uh, there's Dissident Whispers, Silvery Barbs, Calm Emotions, Darkness, Beacon of Hope, Daylight, Compulsion, Confusion, Dominate Person, Rar Rari's Telepathic Bond. I thought that was just called Telepathic Bond, but okay. Now, let's get to the feet, because you they get added, those spells get added to your spell list if you're a spellcaster. Then we get the feet, which you can take at later levels. Um... Now, obviously, what you what I would imagine if a player, if you do introduce Strixhaven to your campaign, your players go there later, and it's not part of their background. What could happen is um, they could take this feat. But yeah, this feat was introduced for the per like um, the reason. This feat is essentially like a spell initiate. So. Um, so lore hold if you pick a lore hold uh initiate you get choose two from light sacred flame and thaumaturgy as cantrips and then you get to choose one first level cleric or wizard spell now this is for any class like you don't have to be a spell cast so it's like magic initiate where you get to pick you know some spells and some cantrips uh, it's just that if you have the Strixhaven back, one of the Strixhaven backgrounds, you instead have to take the exact one that was associated with your colleague. So you get basically a free fee for with a Strixhaven background. Which, again, I'm okay with. Now, again, you, you get this fee. So not only if you're a spellcaster and you pick uh, one of these colleagues, you're actually getting a lot, potentially a lot of extra spell cast in early game. For example, you're getting two free cantrips at level one, as well as a, 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 a first level spell. Um, when you cast the chosen first level spell without a spell slot, you must finish a long rest before you can cast it in this fashion again. You can cast it, uh, it with your spell slots if you have them. So there you go. Uh, so that is pretty handy so yeah like it's just extra magic for the magic users but it's, it makes sense because again it's a it's a school where magic is everywhere so a barbarian would still have these spells which is still funny because barbarians can't cast spells while they're raging so a barbarian uh like but the funny thing is also a barbarian of lore hold could possibly take cure wounds and heal himself um, just not when he's raging because uh, you can't also concentrate on spells so you would want more instantaneous spells uh, sadly enlarge is not like in, I've been enjoying playing a barbarian that can enlarge himself so sadly enlarge is a concentration spell actually yeah the reason why I can cast is because it's a magic item uh, that's doing it anyway so that's what we're getting instead of subclasses I like the backgrounds. I just wish we still had the subclasses. Because some of these sound really interesting. Like, to be honest with you, I wanted to try out being a tongue wielder for Lorehold. I always found the character. For, 
I was going to plan a character for every single sub for every single college. I was going to do, um, what they called, a tomes uh, scholar. Sorry, a, t a tome something. I can't remember the name now. I lost the image. Hold on, where is it? <laughs> I lost it. Uh, yeah, I was going to be a tome wielder for Lorehold. I was going to be a mist mage for Prismari. I was going to be a sequence prophet for uh, what's it called? Quandrix. I was going to be an ink caster for uh, Silver Quill. Stomach is hurting a little bit. Oh. Oh, that actually really hurt there. Uh, I was going to try, I don't know what I was going to try from Witherbloom. Because one of the things I like about Witherbloom is it the, the whole concept of Witherbloom is actually a druid that I played a few months, like about a year ago. It, it was a lizard folk uh, necromancer slash druid sep who believed, it was a circle of spores obviously, but a druid and it was a necromancer for, you know, other stuff. Like it was a homebrew necromancy class that me and a friend made. And so, yeah. I was multi-classed and the idea was just like life and death you are one and well <laughs> so i was like oh wow i would remake sep for witherbloom but yeah like again but my main point is they had again subclasses for all these different things and now they're gone so like uh anyway another feat we get is strixhaven mascot which essentially is you get the fine familiar and you get a special familiar depending on your college um prerequisite is a fort level strixhaven initiate feat so you can only take the strixhaven mascot if you have the strixhaven initiate feat which you get for free if you're a strixhaven college student <laughs> so yeah you get an inkling mascot for silver quill a past mascot for witherbloom Fractal mascot for Quandrus, air art, sorry, not air, art elemental mascot for Prismari, and a spirit statue for Lorehold. Now, this familiar would actually act in the same manner as the Pact of Chain for the Warlock, meaning you, when you take the attack action, you can forgo one of your attacks and allow your mascot to make one attack with its own, uh, with its reaction. But here's a fun twist. As long as the familiar, as long as the mascot is within 60 feet of you, you can swap places and teleport uh, with each other. Uh, you can do so once until you finish a long rest, or, or, pardon me, or you can sacrifice a second level spell or higher to achieve uh, the same effect. So that is great. Now to, again, so that was a good thing, mixed in with the feats. Here where it gets, here is my sorry here's my uh, biggest disappointment the class the subclass is being gone is my big sorry folks again i apologize as i said the dog i can't have them fight they got into a really bad fight uh yesterday and his nose is actually pretty scratched up oh come here baby come here come here come here is that you want me to pick you up oh you want to play uh so yeah come here little baby come here come here come here baby here is Pop, our doggy. He probably thinks I'm going out because I'm wearing the mask. Ah, oh, there you go, you're my doggy. Ah, oh, see now, he just wants some attention. Oh, baby, go back onto the bed. Oop. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. Ah, uh, the disappointment is in the sub lack of subclasses. Uh, that is second biggest, but here's the biggest. I was expecting lots of spells uh, and lots of magic items. Here is, oh boy, here is the spells for that we get with this book. Silvery Bards, Borrowed Knowledge, Kinetic Jaunt, Vortex Warp, Wither and Bloom. Uh, Wither and Bloom are one. Five spells. One for each college. <sighs> yeah. 
I understand that they were trying to make this book more accessible to non spellcasters. And again, I support it. I did the same thing for my own, like, sort of Hogwarts home setting that I did for my girlfriend's birthday. Like, but, like, the whole, like, adventuring university type of thing. But still. <laughs> like, no, mind you, I didn't invent any new spells. Like, uh, it was a birthday winter, so I didn't want to invest too much time into it. But for a thing that has magic everywhere, you expect a bit more spells. Uh, I'm not going to go into the description of the spells, but all the spells, except for Silvery Barbs, are second level. So four out of five are second level. And let's get to the new magic items. We have some new ones. Now, these, oh wait, these are the magic items for sale. Uh, there is the magic items description section, which, if I'm being honest, doesn't look like it actually adds anything else. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, some my for some reason DD Beyond acts funny with my uh, cr uh with my cr Chrome browser, so I have to sometimes zoom out because I can't see the full list on the side of all the items. It won't let me scroll down. Um, but yeah, okay. So we're just gonna read out the magic items for sale. Cause that would be the fast way. There's actually two that I'm like again this is where it gets uh, also this one it also lists their price now some of these are actually quite cheap which sort of reflects the whole magic is everywhere uh essentially a first level spell scroll is ruled as common i don't know if that is the way it is in tasha's uh sorry xanthra's guide to everything i don't know if it's a common if it's listed as a common magical item I always thought spell scrolls of first level and higher were uncommon, you know, and due to their rarities. But at least in this campaign setting, first level spell scrolls are common, which again, in my mind, makes sense. Uh, a Strixhaven pendant is common. Now, everything is common except for the things that are primer, which are, is college primer. So the college primers are all the same price, 300 gold. Uh, a spell scroll, a first level spell scroll is 50 gold pieces. So I'm guessing that means you can't buy a spell scroll of higher level, which is interesting because these adventures take you from level 1 to level 8. And even higher, apparently. Um, so I'm surprised that they only have the first level spell scrolls. But they are 50 gold each. Uh, you can buy a pl any plus one weapon for 300 gold. A uh, Strixhaven pendant is 100 gold. There are two more common magical items. The Cuddly Strixhaven mascot, which can be described as whatever the mascots are, whichever one you wanted to buy, for 100 gold. And it comes with an effect. And we'll actually read out the effect of the... What's it called? What does it actually do? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll actually read out the effects of the cuddly Strixhaven mascot and the bottle of boundless coffee. So let's go alphabetical. Uh, a bottle is common. It is 100 gold. The metal bottle carries delicious warm coffee. The bottle comes with a stopper which is attached to the bottle by a little chain. When, even when open, the bottle won't accept any liquid other than the coffee it produces. The coffee inside is always comfortably warm and none of the heat can be felt through the bottle. Each time you drink the coffee, roll a d20 on a 1, the bottle refuses to dispense coffee for the next hour. If you pour coffee from the bottle rather than drinking from it, the coffee vanishes the moment it leaves the bottle. Which is pretty hilarious, especially the fact that it doesn't even, the, the drink doesn't even give you any kind of effect. It's just a magic item that you expect all the students to have for helping keep them awake. Uh, now for the mascot. Now this one actually has potentially even a combat effect. Re representing one of the mascots of Strixhaven, this soft, tiny magic toy is perfect for cuddling. If you press it on your arm, shoulder, or leg as an action, the toy stays attached there for one hour or until you use an action to remove it. The toy can also be used to fight off fear. When you make a saving throw to avoid or end the frightened condition on yourself, 
you can give yourself advantage on the roll if the toy is on your person. If you do, uh, you must decide to do so before rolling the d20. If the save succeeds, you can't use the toy in this way until you finish a long rest. So you have a little cuddly buddy <laughs> to give you effects. Now I okay, I I will say, I do love those things. I like the idea of these special books. Um, I will say these the they, all these books. Uh, the primers require a human body, a spellcaster. So in my mind, they can be used uh, for your spell books. I have to scroll back to my notes. I'm so miserable up here. Um, but yeah, so I would allow these primers to be used as spell books, for example, a wizard. But they can they're they're human by any spellcaster. And they all have three charges, which re they recharge 1d3 at dawn. They each give you different types of um, benefits reflecting the college. So, uh, again, I don't want to go into too much detail because, again, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want people just to uh, write down what I'm saying and then not have to buy the book, you know? Uh, let's talk about the race options, which is one new race option, the Aulin. Uh, gotta say, I'm okay with. Uh, I've always like, I know adventure like this is not an adventurers league league sorry adventurer league uh, legal class because it gets fly speed. You get fly speed equal to your walking speed. You can't use this flying speed if you're wearing medium or heavy armor. So therefore, you have to, have to, be uh, wearing light armor or none, which makes it more, which make, which suggests the race is more suited for you know the more dexterous people. You know, this is stop a barbarian. <laughs> So there you go. Um, you have silent feathers, which give you profi which allows you to have proficiency in stealth. Uh, you have dark vision up to one hundred and twenty feet. Oh, wow! So that plus fly, yeah. Uh, you can choose to either be a small or medium. And the usual typical thing that they're doing, which is you know you can choose your ability scores and whatnot, because they're trying to be a bit more flexible. With that, which I totally get. Whew. Whew. Oh, sorry about that. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, da, 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 da. They're even being more flexible with height and weight. They're now to say, choose the role on the, in the ta table that best represents the build you imagine for your character. So if you want a short character, choose a more shorter race and, you know, whatnot. So, um, <laughs> uh, again, I don't mind that all that stuff. Like, I don't mind what they're doing with ability scores and whatnot with races. Um, uh, they t there's a section here about choosing a college. Read the descriptions in chapter one and choose the college that appeals to you. Read the description of backgrounds and feats in this chapter. If one of them catches your eye, choose that college. If you have access to magic, the gathering cards from the Strixhaven set. Find a card that appeals to you and build that character. So, like again, it's the typical stuff that I've noticed with the other MTG settings where they're like, oh yeah, um, you know, just look at this stuff. Um, yeah. So, da, 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 da. that's all there is in the character options. Let's go on to the other stuff. Now, there are rules for running the adventures that are in this book there's uh, there's actually a special strixhaven tracker sheet uh you can list like it's labeled strixhaven um memories you can chart your relationships with npcs such as students teachers whatever there's your report cards so basically year one two and three you're expected to have oh right there's actually different numbers of tests uh, again, this is more, um, you get a sense of how the school years go through the, tr the adventures that they have in this book. So, for example, 
Um, I, again, I, I haven't fully read the Night of Adventure, so I'm not quite sure on this. You can also list your extracurriculars as well as a job. And here's where it gets very interesting. The fact that they included extracurriculars and job, like, you know, part-time jobs. So extracurriculars have benefits. They have, like, you have, there's a special mechanic called student dice, as well as relationship points. So I'm not gonna read out all the extracurriculars. I'm gonna pick one from each category. For example, there's the Dragon Chess Club, which I'm like, obviously there'll be some. There's the uh, live action role playing guild. So you can play this game. You can role play your character, role playing another character. It's weird. It's very meta, but it's interesting. And uh, or there's only those two things, so I'll mention one more, which is sort of my, it, it, which leans into one of the things I'm excited about. Mage Tower Cheer Squad. Now, Mage Tower is the sport that was featured in some of the more promotional things. It, it's sort of like in a stadium, and you see magic effects going all over the place. They give you rules for that. Now, the rules are written in a chapter relating to one of the adventures, because one of the adventures revolves around a match that happens at the end of the year so there's that now there let's see job options your character can get a job uh job benefits now every job has the same amount of wage so that's really nice that the, like there's no one job superior than the others uh, the money you earn is five gold at the start of each week uh, for as long as you hold that job if a student quits during the academic year they stop earning this money at the end of the week which they quit there's also a that you you also get a relation a positive or negative relation point the player's choice with one student npc at that job this represents a co-worker with whom the character is often scheduled with and to whom they can easily form a connection. So let's get into the options, shall we? Uh, you can work in the library, and it gives you, sorry, it gives you the locations, sorry. Um, now again, I suppose you should talk to your DM about like what position in this building would you have as your job? For example, the biblioplex, which is basically a big library. Are you a book clerk, bookshelver, cafe worker, cleanup, crew member, sorry, kind of crew member, garden tender, or stone worker. And it gives you, I don't know if this is one co-worker or two, um, Drozlemir Yarnask, so I don't know if that's two or one, it sounds like one. Then there's also the ba Bows and Tavern. You can work in the campus magical labs. Um, there's also the dormitories and there's even a ca uh, cafe so there you go and then there are rules for doing exams which are broken up into two phases study phase and exams um, so again I really like how this book fleshes out the idea of you are students you know, like you're, you're not playing adventurers, sorry, you're not just simply playing as adventurers or even the teachers, you're playing students. And that to me is the biggest draw, uh, sorry, draw for this book is just that simple fact that we're, you know, we're, we're students. Um, there's also rules for cheating on the exam. Now also, the book does also imply that you, your characters can be expelled. So potentially, character debt is not the only thing you need to worry about. So it, it makes that makes me think of that line from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's uh, Stone. Uh, the whole, like, you know, 
You'll get us, uh, sorry, yeah, you'll get us killed or worse, expelled. You know, like what Hermione says to Harry and Ron. So that just springs to my mind, that whole thing. So that's some of the extra stuff that you can do, like that co is covered in this. Um, the, oh, wait, there is a list of fellows. Is there a list of fellow students? Uh, yes, a little bit. Uh, there. Oh, wait, here they are. Yeah. So yeah, uh, there's three. Oh, okay. Um, they they give you suggestions on the stat blocks for them. For example, first year. There's a specific stat block for a first year student. But then there's college apprentice. If you're if you're a second year student, there are college apprentice, which is it. Which each college has a, has their own like apprentice stat block. And then for third or later, they are college pled mages. And we even get uh, we get some fellow students from A to L. Uh, it gives you their oh we have a damp bear, uh, who looks actually pretty interesting. Uh, are we getting a picture of each one? Oh please tell me we're getting a picture of each one. Oh my god yes we are. So yeah there's actually a good number of them. They even tell you their what like year they're in. So, now mind you, in some cases I would hold some of these back to introduce them later on, like maybe as new exchange students. So we even got, we got one vampire in the mix. A good number of humans, which I suppose should be, I suppose are expected, are one of the most common races. Ooh, we got a gnome. Uh, we, got a, we got a few owl in as well, we even got an uh, elephant. Wow, and we we got there's one orc. Uh, we got fire gun, uh, and that's it. The last one was a fire gun actually. Oh, and it tells you their extracurriculars, their jobs, their bond. If you bond with them, they give you a boon. Uh, do 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 do. Well, okay. Uh, so yeah, each one comes with their own unique uh, boon or bane, depending on how you uh, been a social, how you a social socialize with these people. So now, mind you, you get to, funny enough, you get to pick the relationship with with your you know potential coworker. Now, in my mind, I can ma can't imagine most players choosing to take the negative. So in my mind, I would actually leave that more up to a roll. You know, um, or I would have a role playing moment and let the player decide. Like, is this the type of person that I would like to, you know, b basically socialize with? You know, something like that. Um, right back to the table of contents. So yeah, the first adventure is Campus Kerfuffle. Next adventure is work hard, play harder. Next one is all the world's a stage. Now, by completion of all the world's a stage, ideally your characters should be level four. Uh, each character advances to level four at the end of the adventure. So this book is written at the concept of uh, milestones, which sort of makes sense because I suppose you're supposed. To, I think you're supposed to have finished. Um, Hold on, back. What's back in session? I think yeah. Once the characters have chosen their colleges and their ceremonial, their other second year decisions, it's time to kick off. Oh, oh, oh. oh. So interestingly enough, um, you okay? So first year students actually don't pick a college. Uh, from first to the adventure, help players choose at least three courses their characters are taking this year, either by coming up with their courses or by rolling on the second one, uh, year courses table in front of the character also enrolled in a required course. Um, Raven and Symbology. Uh, hmm. For this adventure, the character must choose one of three things. Uh, I'm just going to read chapter one. Uh, sorry, hold on. I just wanted to quickly, briefly look at 
the previous adventure. Because, like, I'm curious now, when do players actually pick their college? Because by that statement of that one, it makes me think of orientation challenge. There we go. Running this adventure. Here's what you need to know. Da, da, da. Character advancement about suggesting levels when they complete certain tip tasks. Da, 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 da. There's the random encounter. Before starting the adventure, our players choose at least three courses. Uh -huh. In the terms class, we're about to start for characters to request all the abilities to complete the orientation required for your experience. Orientation takes place at the da, da, da. Uh huh. I don't really understand this. I think. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out when do they actually choose. All right, so close da, 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 stream start successfully. Da, da. See, there was no mention okay so at some point okay so you don't straight off pick up pick a college so and by the looks of things you pick uh so it does seem that uh choose one yeah so yeah you choose a college uh, when you start your second year of strict haven so that's interesting so it actually so it's not level one that they would gain the, that feat will be at level four when it's appropriate so there you go so it's not actually a free well actually no you technically yeah no you say so you do get a free feat yeah yeah never mind never mind never mind well, actually, see, that's what's weird. Hold on, let me read back. Backgrounds. Because, like, generally, you get a background from level one. This section presents five backgrounds you can choose to reflect your character study preparing. Oh, okay, so that's why okay okay so you, you're unlimited to these backgrounds on the strict haven campaign there's just one way you can choose to dive deeply into your character's college affiliation if you do choose one of these backgrounds you can assume that your life to this point has been consumed by the by the education that one has made enrolling at strict haven possible for you you might not have much experience in the world beyond the preparatory work you're ready to excel as a student, and in that turn, you will you uh, in turn will prepare you to excel at whatever path becomes after graduation. So, like, this is actually a pre thing. You have spent your youth preparing to be a student of of Law Holy College, reading every book on the college's recommended list from prospective students. Uh, your academic passions are in the broad field of history. You might have a dream of using magic to contact great historical figures of your own. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So, these backgrounds are your ca is your character like specifically studying to pick that college. So, technically, you already have your college picked out at, you know, in the first adventure. It's just you're not officially a member of the co the college, which is what which would explain why first year students don't have that specific uh, thing. So there we go. So so anyway, 
which is fun like the idea then you get to pick courses let's see let's see some of these courses and they tell you which college actually um you know teaches it so for a second year oh here's a fun one it's number five if you choose at random introduction to reanimation authored by witherbloom so even though you're say for example a law hall student Let's say you're a wizard of law, of law hall, but you're still you're but you're you're still a, uh, a specialist in necromancy, and uh, I'm trying to think why would a wizard necromancy? Well, the whole work with spirits, or maybe you're a member of law hall because you're hoping to uncover some secret information on like you know ancient spells and all that of you know necromancy and whatnot. Either way, there's plenty uh, in my mind. There's plenty of reasons why, but yeah, you could still go to introduction of, uh, of animation it's just that you would have to go to the witherbloom college uh, grounds to study it so it's actually a nice way as a way of having the players you know cross section but at the same time still have their preferred studies so like these are additional studies uh their commitment College of some other bear. Uh, do, do, do. So yeah, this one is all about the sport mage tower, which uh, I'm a little bit surprised by the rules. Uh, here are the rules: each of the two teams have an equal number of students, usually not exceeding five, which means you can even have a team of two. Each team is represented by a small mascot uh, that reflects. Sorry, folks. Uh, I think we need to go do something. Please bear with me. Uh, sorry folks, I just closed the lens, like the lens cover for my camera while I go do something real quick.
Alright, folks, I am back. We gotta turn it back camera. There we go. Uh, Alright, so, yeah. You get a couple of adventures. Uh, back to the sport. So, each team is represented by a small mascot creature that reflects one of Strixhaven's, Strixhaven's colleges, as described in the map mascot section for chapter one. The game begins the two with when the game begins, the two mascots are placed on high towers set opposite ends of the field of play. Each team tries to steal the opposing mascot mascot and transport it back to the tower at the end of the field. So at their end of the field. So it's basically capture the flag. The game occurs in three phases, each twenty minutes twenty minutes each. The team that scores the most points at the end of the two phase uh, wins the game. Anything that could cause damage to a participant, mascot, a spectator. Pop, come here. Pop, you have to quiet down. Alright? Oh. Hey, Pop, no. Sorry, now my brother's out in the hall. Like, he was just going across my bedroom door. So now my dog is acting all excited. Come here. Only Logan, pop. Come here. You know, you, you, you know, I'm gonna have to text Ma at some point to see if she can look at the other dog, because they sleep downstairs in a uh, crate. Um, you know, to keep them from you know doing certain things on the Christmas tree and whatnot. So we could lock one. Of, if we can lock up the one that he's having troubles with, then that and let him go downstairs for a little bit. Uh, otherwise, he's just gonna keep crying. Um, I'll try. I want to finish this video. Come here. Come here. Come here, you. You stay on my lap now, because you seem to be quiet, more quiet then. Okay. All right. Um. So yeah, if you do anything that could cause damage to a participant, mascot, a spectator. Or that would damage the field of play in any way is prohibited. Breaking this rule uh, results in expulsion from the game. Questionable use of magic can be called as a foul by the game's referee, a faculty member fails to post during official games. Participants uh, who ac accumulate three fouls are ejected from the game. Teams may not replace participants who fought who foul out. So this adventure essentially revolves around you know this sport it seems. So which is quite interesting. Uh, there's no arena listed. So. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is the final match? Well, where, where's the 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 natural zone arena? Hunt for the mage tower. Mascot. Oh. <laughs> Oh, maybe it's getting some air. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, blah 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 blah. That's the grounds where the person who apparently looks after mascots. And then there's your two exams. Yeah, that's another thing. You have those extra courses, but you then also have um, 
Um, since we have very gone to catch up with the Rain Force and very good at the Rain Force position, let's see and catch up learn about the Battle of Strixhaven. Uh, mage character and inner students is part of the scene. Ideally, if some of the characters are interested in it, you may choose another student from the foe. Uh, now, stop it, Pop. Stop jumping around like that. I'm in a team. Does it not tell you how to. When characters are to do the. Okay. Um, <laughs> Heaven commendation on their student record as well as monetary prize half of half of tuition within a year away. Effectively, that means each cat receives 400 GP if their team wins. Okay, so it's at the end of the year. So let's. So, okay. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, okay. So, do, do we get an arena? Yes, we do. So, we do get a, a description of the arena as well as we get a, dis uh, a description of their locker room. <laughs> See, look at this one. <laughs> Uh, so I'm with the team with the highest success reason match myself making an ability check character and cast a spell Cast a spell first level or second level gives another team Gives another team with an ability check cast a spell with a third level or higher chance Okay, so the Does this spell this wants to benefit? So apparently you don't just cast spells You choose this uh, you choose to sacrifice a spell slot is basically phase one so it's the game is broken up into three phases that's interesting and instead of making an ability check the character can cast a spell okay I just called there to send him down because they can probably hear his crying from downstairs <sighs> Sorry, <clears throat> so my mom could actually hear me. So she, I didn't even have to send her that text. Um, all right. So, what are these guys? So I just know it's a new stat block, which is quite interesting. Uh, uh huh interesting uh so yeah we get descriptions of how to actually do the spore at the end of this thing which is a bit annoying i wish they would have just kept the entire spore because apparently you can do the spore at any time i do wish they would have just you know had it listed in its own section rather than have be scattered amongst you know across the chapter so one thing is though it is certain is it's not so much as each call it's not like in harry potter where each house uh, you know competing against each other it's basically the idea of the, uh, this whole thing is students who get along just form teams regardless of their college now in my mind there are probably some official college uh, you know teams like for example, there might be a team that is completely dedicated of only um, Silver Quill and another team that is purely of Lorehold. And maybe there's a special game at the in the fourth year. Sorry, for fourth year students, you know, like if there's a, like a special team, you know, and a special uh, competition that that takes place only for fourth years. In my mind, maybe. Um. So there's that. So yeah, there we go. We have that uh, thing. So we have your first year, which is essentially your characters doing some stuff. And then eventually you guys get to pick 
um, you know, ch you get to choose your co your college. Uh, it would end in second year. Then we get into the third year, which is called Ma the Magister's Masquerade, which basically creates um, a whole masquerade ball type thing, which again, I know some people who will be very into that. And then last but not least, we get your final year called, just titled Reckoning in Ruins. And again, like, again, there are certain, you're, regardless of what col uh, colleges your players are in or what courses they're interested in, it, it, there are some exams that they automatically have to take. For example, um, in year one, every player has to have Slidey as a court. They have to have Slidey, Magical Philosophies exam, uh, Owl Bears, and they have to have Magical philo uh, Philosophies, or whatever, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, exam, Otix. So that's automatic. Like, they're the courses that they have to have. And so they all have the same courses, which is enough to get them a bit, you know, of a bond going into the second year, which which should allow them to have a bond that allows them to ignore a little bit of, the, you know, the co potential college stuff. And then in second year, they automatically take scribing and symbology, uh, which is glyph and warding, as well as... Oh, wait, they're, yeah, it's this, the same two course. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all the same course. They're, 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 yeah, sorry, my bad. And then in mass, uh, the, la the next year is Advanced Arcane History. And last but not least, it's Arcane Herbology. Now, again, there are possibly other exams and there are other courses that the players can have individually rather than as a group but again the idea is they have these shared classes which cement their bonds and so forth so last but not least we get friends and foes now this is where it comes quite interesting um there's a lot of stuff here Whoa, that's a big creature. It's a CR18. Straight away, we got the Archaic. Um, don't want to show off too much. We do get some elementals. Also, apparently the Academy was founded seven centuries ago by five dragons. So, like, which is very fascinating. For example, the B Belagos Witherbloom. This dragon is has like he has he has a very undead uh, nature to him he even has raven wings you know instead of you know the traditional thing he is a druid <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm just looking at him and he's he's a gargantuan dragon in brackets druid mutual good ac is 22 he's a cr 24 what is he has a miasmal flow which i'm guessing oh there he has decaying breath or take necrotic damage, poison, uh, and whoa, so it's both necrotic and poison. Damn, oh wow, that is a really powerful breath attack. Wow, that's really cool. Now, Aparmi would also, I do want to say though, Aparmi would not mind if they separated creatures by uh, colleges. You know, we got, oh, there's some, there's a construct archivist, which is probably someone who does some, and again, my fucking beard is getting in my fucking, oh, it's irritating my nose because the mask is pushing my mustache up into my nose, which is just causing a whole bunch of it, issues, like, and it is driving me mental. Um, so yeah, we just have, we have, again, a stat block for each of the founding dragons. Now the founder dragons are actually not the deans or even teachers. They are off doing their own thing and may come back, you know, on occasion. I have no idea why you would want to fight one, but there you go. Uh, 
So yeah, we got some really interesting. Wow. Uh, so that is pretty cool. Oh, wow. So the actually, uh, it's a little dis there's some a little bit of disappointing. Um, so there's apparently a secret society within Strixhaven um, which can act as you know antagonists and a part of me is just oh wow it's really cool it's sorry it's just really really interesting some of these masks like Uh, we also get stat blocks for the mascots, um, and as I said, we get also um, Prismari Professor of Expression. So in just in case you want to have a uh, new creation, your own teachers, like there's a standardized stat block for them. So we do get their students and you know the professors uh, stat blocks individually. So there are some stuff that's, that are associated with certain colleges that we do get broken up. And then there's a Silver Quill Dragon. I've already read that because Silver Quill is, is my favorite college just by, you know, lore and whatnot. But I do also really like Witherbloom just because of I have a love of necromancy. <laughs> so then like we have there's actually a bunch of different things which which again is really cool i like how each dragon is properly unique um they're not like your standardized dragons so like lorehold is not a, like a gold dragon he it like he is a dragon species that completely onto himself he is just a dragon that he is not you know such and such He's just himself, you know, and I actually really like that. So there are some definite. Like, I uh, I know I didn't read out a lot of these guys. The thing is, I want to keep some, you know, surprises. So I'm only reading like you know names and stuff, and I apologize for that. Um, because again, I I don't want to give up too much information about the book obviously um hold on there's some here wait hold on there's something here about unusual attacks unusual attacks of magic here and you'll find weapons to do unusual damage to effect unusual effect unusual weapons that step back to present how the creature is being attacked for destruction has no effect for how the weapon is destined to kill someone else uh huh Oh, so in case I want to give, oh, that's cool. That's cool. So one thing that they, I think, I don't know if it's something that they intended to start doing with future books, but there, remember how I said Witherbloom had in brackets druid. That was because in case I wanted to give him magic items. Now this is something that I actually always would have like would have enjoyed uh, in previous stat blocks because now mind you for spell casters, it's always been a bit obvious. Because it says, you know, this character is a, ca uh, you know, is a, you know, uses like, for example, the wizard spell list, you know, or the cult fanatic. I think one of the cult, I think there's like uh, some cult stat blocks that specifically say like there are, uh, I think Elemental Evil has some cult members that are druids. And it says like they have the druid spell list, you know, they have these styles with the druid spell list compared. So you can derive that's a druid. But then you get like some magic ones. I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head 
like barbarian specific magic items or say a rogue specific magic item but like it's difficult to determine whether someone is like a rogue or whatever you know what i mean sorry a rogue or i'm trying to sorry barbarian or i'm trying to think of another one a fighter so like it's it's a little difficult on that circumstance so therefore you can't really be like oh yeah they this guy can exchange that item you know but now with some of these stat blocks they're having in per, uh, parentheses um or in brackets you know their spell list for example Gelzariath prismari is a sorcerer dragon as opposed to witherbloom who is a druid which again fairly interesting now they don't list it for obviously non-humanoids uh most of the students are wizards which pretty funny even the professors are this <laughs> as such um actually hold on I, I mean i'm curious about witherbloom students give me a sec because witherbloom students in my mind i'm picturing okay yeah so witherbloom students are druids okay i, I thought so like i was just curious there's a fledge mage and then there's a, an apprentice yeah, they are druids. I was like, they should be druids. <laughs> um, Silver Quill, I would not be surprised if they were clerics or bards, because that's the suggested class for them. Uh, yeah, final note. on um, Like, again, sorry. Uh, another thing I do like is this game, like, the book does have a lot of information on the founder dragons. There's like an oracle and archaics. There's also these strange magical effects called snarls and star arches, which are pretty fun reads. Um, because apparently, according to in the MTG universe, the play the world that Strixhaven is located on is actually created from two worlds colliding into each other, and that has had a huge magical effect, which is these snarls and star arches. Now, however, they gave you some fun information uh sorry where is it do, 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 do. uh where is it do, 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 do. Hunt, there was a section about well there's a section about if how you can include other classes uh where is it there is a section about placing where to place the book there was a section i'm trying to find it it was something i really enjoyed hold on it gave you examples of using it in you know traditional dnd Oh yeah, here it is, here it is, here it is. So, in the, multi in the multiverse of Magic the Gathering, uh, Strixhaven is located on a world called Arcovios, which, according to, le to legend, forms from the collision of two mer uh, and or merging of two other worlds. It is situated at the northeastern portion of the continent called Oritia, also known as the Vastlands, which is populated by a tremendous variety of peoples. Now, that is the MTG universe. Now. For the purposes of D and D, though, you can play Strixhaven wherever it best fits your needs for your campaign. It could be in a world of your own creation, in a published D and D setting such as Forgotten Realms or Eberron, or in the play, um, the plan, uh, planar, cosmopolis uh, of Sigil, or in an interplanet planar nexus that allows it to draw students from across the material plane or the entire multiverse. Whatever your world, wherever world you decide to play Strixhaven in, tree element of the wider world of Archivios might have some impact on adventures in the school, which are the Snarls and Star Arches, the Founder Dragons, the Archex, and the Oracle. So that's one of the things I love about this book. They literally are just like, yeah, put it anywhere. Like, Put, put it in any way that uh, that would explain how it's getting all these extra students in which i love 
and just after like there is a sec there is a moment before that uh, where there's a really uh, nice looking picture it's a letter a mag a very obviously magical letter and it seems like the the envelope uh, un unfolded into a form of an owl which I find very nice so like that to me is brilliant like I would love to have like I have a part I have a, an MTG group for D&D &D, um, that are currently doing Curse of Strahd now before that they were doing some stuff in they've done stuff in Zandakar they've done stuff in the Forgotten Realm and now they're in uh, Bavaria you know trying they're doing all this different stuff to help uh, Gatewatch you know they're, they're students of Gatewatch you know like Jason and all that now unfortunately they're level 8 now which sort of puts them above everything that's going to happen in this book this book I would love to use this book more as a level 1 to 8 type thing and then have players you know kick off into other adventures you know from that point um, you know like after they graduate like they've sort of like maybe stuck together to you know continue you know having adventures like and you know use what they've learned in Strixhaven to go on adventures but like I have another campaign on Thursdays and I have my Elder Scrolls game uh, on Sundays the one thing I would love to do is just have someone magically get a letter and then like this letter you know fly like maybe it's a paper owl envelope maybe the owl uh, paper like the, it's still there and the, the owl in paper a paper owl flies over lands you know unfolds like a special spot on its stomach or something and reveals the letter or it unfolds itself to reveal the invitation you know I would like to me that is hilarious and I love how they're leading into the Harry Potter vibes with that image you know so like I really enjoy that now like I said there are two big disappointments in this book Again, it was the spells and subclasses seemingly being gone. Um, but everything else about it, I have to admit, it's great. <laughs> um, if, like, again, I plan to run this uh, this setting for my niece, nephew, and my little brother. Like, I plan to run a Strixhaven campaign for them. You know? So... <laughs> it's pretty good and again i like how they have it so that you don't need to be a spellcaster to go there but at the same time if you're a barbarian who wanted to go to strixhaven you still learned a little bit of magic you know so like even barbarians get a little bit of spell casting like you know now i say barbarian as the most extreme sense because technically when you reach level three as a fighter you could choose you know to be a eldritch knight of they even give a recommendation of what sort of barbarian the barbarian uh path of the ancestral guardian like that one ties with they even suggested that would be a great fit for a lore hold so like again i really enjoyed how they sort of like created this whole campaign setting around a school that's very hogwarts-esque but yet it still manages to be inclusive for other classes and like how they encourage you to like like they give you some again they give you examples of how it could place it in the multiverse so it's not completely tied into mtg if you're not into the mtg stuff like i just love it and i love how much each uh D, &D book sorry mtg book or mtg setting i should say that comes out how much wizards of the coast is leaning into the lore and the thematics of it like ravnica it's the whole idea of this that this giant urban mag tech society is amazing i love uh how there's like this tr like you know a magic mag tech trains i love how there's a public transport system i love how there's newspapers you know and coffee and all that I then like how with the Terros one, it's just like it's just amazing. 
we're all like it leads really into the whole Greek stuff and the gods and all that. Like it's amazing. And now we have this Strixhaven, which is you know again leads into a, a school stuff, and yet and, and they went through with it. They went. They had rules for the whole doing the test. They even had rules for studying, which it to me like is just great. So like this book is a definite must buy in my opinion. For any for any nerd who's a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, as well as Harry Potter. So yeah, um. Now so like, m but however, because of the lack of spells and uh, like out of ten, because of the lack of spells and the disappearance of the subclasses. This book will ha will only reach a, a eight out of ten for me. You know, actually, you know what? No, it's nine out of ten. Like they threw in so much additional things, a sort of makes up for it. Like you feel like your characters. I, I can't imagine you not feeling like your characters are students, with how much they put into this book. So yeah, nine out of ten. Like, and again, you know what? If you were looking for a new subclass or new, a bunch of new spells. Yeah, okay, this book is not for you. But that's also s such a small negative, in my opinion, on s what on a great, fantastic book. So, yeah. Uh, that's it for this video. Um, now, let's see. There is one announcement I want to make. Um, I do plan on... Sorry, jump back in. <laughs> I should have given you guys a bit of a heads up. I do plan to get back into my Old Republic Let's Play series. The reason why I've actually been hesitant to do it is because I cancelled my subscription because it's Christmas and I have to sort out, uh, you know, Christmas shopping, you know, for, you know, for my family members and whatnot. So I cancelled my subscription and there's a there's also the big massive update coming on the 14th of December which comes with so much new stuff like it comes with a new story sorry two new stories because they're it, unlike with the previous expansions where it was one story that was shared between Republic and Empire we now have two stories from you know different perspectives one from the Empire's perspective the other from Republic's perspective there's that Plus, they're completely changing how equipment works. There's going to be uh, changes made to the classes. So, like, there's just a lot of new changes. And, like, I want to tackle them when I have a subscription. And I don't want to do a video. I've decided to stop doing my videos. I might even restart my Warrior play Let's Play series and my Jedi Knight Play series. Just because of the, the sheer change. Um, of how classes are going to work because I, I might even need to take some time to get used to the changes myself so yeah also another big change is I am also some of the other thing like now folks if I do go dark again I apologize but there, there's two big re like there's two big reasons for it reason number one is when it comes to COVID has been a real I want to say COVID hasn't hit me or like as much as it did but like it did like uh, <clears throat> like I haven't like how should I put it <sighs> I haven't feel, been feeling motivated to do my videos like I've been I haven't been hitting my friends I haven't been doing Lura Sport because you know we keep going into these lockdowns so I'm just not so I haven't been doing my videos because I haven't been feeling motivated. Whatever, because of how much time I'm spending at home, I've been wanting to just, when I get time to myself, I want to spend that time to myself. I don't want to be sitting in front of a camera, you know, talking. Uh, and then, so like, that's been a bit of a kick. But this year, what's really going to be difficult for me is, uh, I, when it comes to Lula Sport, Lula Sport is apparently might might be coming back after this uh, winter break, 
but there's been a spike in my country so i don't know what's going to happen there but at the same time i am also because of some structural changes we need a new form two instructor and i've been asked to try and do the form two instructor exam so that i can become the new form two instructor which means i need to study for that uh, i need to study for the theory course which i can do online uh, i then need to save up and practice most likely at home or finding uh one of our form our like one of our previous form two uh, instructors to meet me or message me or video chat with me or whatever to go over some stuff for the practical exam which i might be going if i pass my form my theory exam sorry i will be going then to italy during the summer which means i have to save up for that so not only do i have to save up for that like paying for the exams as well as flying over to Italy to do that I also need to save up because now this one I am it's a bit overwhelming but it's a news I am so excited for <sighs> me get my own place uh, I've been accepted onto certain things which means uh, I have now begun searching I every about a week or so I'm checking listings um, once i'm done paying for certain things i am going to be getting in contact with uh, a landlord that's been in contact with sorry that was my that my sister knows and i'll be possibly looking for my own apartment so yeah so i'm and i have to do that because my ma plans to sell this house she's planning on moving as well so like which means i have a deadline <laughs> so if i have to, so if I have to choose between sitting down, recording a video, or looking for a new, looking for a new place to live, looking for a new place to live is gonna be, you know, number one on that list. Uh, I there. So yeah. Uh, I've also I the thing is I've both I'm trying to invest more for my videos as well like as you know guys i've been posting loads for videos uh, i'm looking into buying a new camera specifically for the purposes of recording videos uh while at ludo store i've eyed a few cameras on amazon but again they are expensive so there's that so yeah well i'm also tackling some of my usual stuff like looking after my little brother and whatnot so yeah like that's why i haven't been doing videos it's just want to you know unwind you know between D, D and you know family stuff like having me time and then plus like just sort of being cooped up like and missing the sport missing my friends like i know i, I know it's not ex no real not a real excuse because you know everyone else is you guys are probably in the same boat as me either way they're my reasons they're my reasons and to me they're like that's like that's I'm being honest with you guys that's how I feel like that's why I, that's why I feel like I haven't been doing as many videos as I should uh, especially when it came to the Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla videos like I just haven't been kind of motivated to do them um, mind you I have my own issues with Assassin's Creed Valhalla but yeah so hey if you're stuck around you now have reasons why my video has been sort of my channel has been sort of dark and whatnot so here's hoping things get a little bit better so i can get back into a more regular sit situation as well as the good news is if i do get my own place which mean it would mean i have much less chat also it's hard to do videos in this house i'm just gonna be honest with you guys like also it's hard to do videos in this house i have my fat i'm living you know i have my family and i can't tell my family to shut up you know i, I, I just can't like it's their house too they have every right to talk or whatever like you know i also live with three dogs so there's that so hopefully when i get my own apartment i'm gonna set aside an area for you know recording videos and whatnot so here's hoping uh but yeah so this is that this has been my review of the Strixhaven book as well as a bit of a channel update so i will probably make a small edit to this to, to the video uh for you know the purposes of going on to youtube but for those of you that have stuck around the live stream thank you 
for those of you that stuck uh, with this long <laughs> ramblings on uh, YouTube, thank you. <laughs> Feel free to subscribe for, uh, for hopefully more nerd stuff, such as Little Sport D&D, and hopefully get back into it, video game Let's Plays. Um, yeah, this is Wilson Ninja, sign out, may the force be with you, and remember, you're all finished.